Eight things you should know about young feminists. 1. Be open-minded. A lot of young people who are passionate about their ideals, whether it's liberal or conservative ideals, tend to get really excited when they start to learn more about them. This is great. You're digging into the narratives you've heard your whole life for the first time. Just do yourself a favor and try to keep an open mind. Don't get to a place where everything you see is yet another example of rape culture. You don't do feminism any favors by unquestioningly accepting everything you see, hear, or read simply because it's said by another feminist. 2. Having an education or being informed does not make you correct. If your argument as to why you are correct and someone else is incorrect rests on, you need to educate yourself or take a women's studies class, you are in the wrong. Simply having done research or taken any number of classes doesn't entitle you to winning an argument. Presenting a more logical and compelling case entitles you to win an argument. 3. What you consider to be universal is your experience. Rely on data, not narratives. A narrative is a story you tell yourself or that someone else tells you. It is subjective and should be kept in check with objective data. Anecdotes can be a powerful addition to a data-driven argument, but they should never be the whole argument. 4. Being offended does not make you right. Feeling offended is an emotion, not an argument. Using it as an argument is a logical fallacy. This doesn't mean being offended is irrelevant, but it's the catalyst for the argument, not the argument itself. 5. You are not entitled to never feel offended. You have the freedom to speak your mind. You don't have the freedom from other people doing the same. Additionally, if you are never offended, you're probably doing something wrong. This means you are speaking only to people who feel the exact same way you do. You'll probably never be offended a day in your life reading Jezebel. But what's the point of being passionate about an ideology if you only ever interact with people who agree with you? 6. If you say you want equality, be prepared to offer equality. If you want to be treated exactly the same as a man, don't also ask for chivalry. If you want equal pay, make sure you are willing to offer equal work. Don't see out low-wage work like education or healthcare. Chose a job that is high-paying, likely because it is difficult, dangerous, unpopular, or otherwise undesirable, like STEM fields or fishing or logging or military work and then put in the same hours as your male or women without children, peers. 7. Think twice before calling out perceived gender inequality at your workplace. No one wants to feel like they are walking on eggshells. No one likes people who make them feel like they need to walk on eggshells. This statement makes people angry, but I'm not trying to imply you shouldn't call out people or do whatever your ideals tell you is right. I'm saying it is probably not to your personal advantage to do this at work. And that is a weighty consideration if you, like most people, want to have a career or at least need one to survive. Raised by it are helpful to think about in a lot of different kinds of situations where calling them out may be to your disadvantage. Whereas another way of handling the situation would make you happier in the long run. 8. Be empathetic and protect your mental health. Don't ever stop treating people like they are people. I know it's a privileged white dude, but he's a human being. Feeling a bunch of hate towards other people is drinking poison and expecting the other person to get sick. When talking to girls and young women today, it can seem as though feminism is completely equated with ending rape culture. And although that is an important focus of contemporary feminist activism, feminism is about more than that. Feminist thought is applicable to economics, international relations, environmentalism, sports, psychology, artificial intelligence, to every area of our lives. My generation is facing a climate crisis, and we are the product of one of the worst recessions in living memory. Feminist concepts, such as care economics or gender budgeting, could prove a useful weapon to defend women's rights and also a better economic and social system. We need to mainstream these concepts so younger feminists can take them further in the future. Online movements and physical protests are and will remain important components of feminist activism for the 21st century. But there is so much more we can do. Start a feminist book club. Create safe spaces for women to discuss their issues. 
write blogs and articles about feminist concepts and ideas, campaign for free childcare in your city, ask a local women's organization to come to your school or university, volunteer at a women's shelter, ask for bookstores in your city or neighborhood to feature more books by women, especially feminist women. Listen to interviews with women who have been changemakers for the rest of us, particularly those who are less well-known. If protests and social media are not your things, think about your skills and what you like to do, and then examine how you can use them to build a movement.